Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My next guest is possibly the brightest young comedian on the scene today. He just completed a national tour with Perry Como, and he's going to be opening at Harrah's in Lake Tahoe this month. But right now, we got him at Caesars. Will you give a big welcome for Jay Leno? Jay? <laughs> Hello, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Y'all see the news today? President Carter has some good news. Said uh, when unemployment hits 100%, should start to level off. So that's the... <laughs> Muhammad Ali's fighting again. He's going to go back in the ring. Uh, next month he's fighting Buddy Epson. Did you see that? Should be a pretty exciting <laughs> A vicious, vicious band. Oh. You know, I noticed something flying in here today. I... You ever notice when you fly that pilots always have pilot names. You know, you get on a plane, you always hear, Hi, this is your pilot, uh, Mike Tiger. We'll be flying to New York. Hi, I'm your pilot, Jim Hunt. Hmm? You never get Angelo Booba flying a plane anymore. <laughs> We're going to New York today. And they always search you for weapons. You know, I mean, you walk through an x-ray machine, they open your luggage, and then you sit down to eat and they give everybody steak knives, you know? You bring your own steak knife, you get 20 years. <laughs> Some of them are just so pompous, you know? Delta, the airline run by professionals. What's TWA, volunteers? Yeah. <laughs> I like uh, LaGuardia Airport, that's my favorite. You got some New Yorkers here, you're playing LaGuardia Airport? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> This is the toughest airport in the world. I mean, you hear announcements you don't hear anywhere else. Attention, Vinny is dead. <laughs> what did Mr. Lewis Knuckles pick up the red phone? Mr. Lou Knuckles on line nine. Now, I know that's unfair. You know, comedians always make fun of New York. and what, But uh, there are things in New York you don't see anywhere else. You know, about a month and a half ago, I was riding the New York City subway. And those of you from New York will verify this. There's a sign in the New York City subway that always amazes me. It just amazed me that it's there. It's in every car, and the sign says, no spitting. <laughs> you know, I hadn't thought to spit when I got on the train. <laughs> <laughs> and you realize they're making a value judgment here about people that ride the subways in New York. And when was the last time you got an airplane, this dude said, uh, we'll be flying at 30,000 feet. The pilot has turned on the no spitting sign. <laughs> The auto industry is in a lot of trouble. You know, it's true. These car dealers will tell you anything to try and sell you a car. A couple weeks ago, I was looking for a car. Guy tried to sell me a 72 Pinto. You know one of the ones with the exploding gas tank? <laughs> tried to convince me it was a classic. Said there wouldn't be many of them left. And I said, I don't know. I like the General Motors man, Mr. Goodwrench. You seen him? Isn't he just the most honest mechanic in the world? Huh? <laughs> A new engine? Oh, no, Mrs. Smith. It's just this little 29-cent fuse. <laughs> of course, this guy's never around when you bring your car in for service. You know. Excuse me, is Mr. Goodwrench here? Mr. Goodwrench, uh, he ain't here right now, but his brother-in-law, Dead Battery, will take care of you, all right? <laughs> insurance is the same way. You know, you have to have insurance to drive. And it's always amazing me. You ever see these companies that come on TV late at night or on the radio, and they try to get bad drivers to sign with them? But they never call you a bad driver before you sign. They always call you an unlucky driver, huh? Hey, you're the kind of fellow, oh, every now and then you like to have a few drinks, maybe plow into the side of a school bus, huh? <laughs> sure, you had a quarter tequila, but maybe you had a little bad luck, too, didn't you? I saw one the other day. Now, as much as I hate jokes about this subject, and all comedians make jokes about this subject, I'll tell you the ad exactly the way the man says it. You've all seen this. You figure it out. The man comes out. He stands like this, and he says, Preparation H. Huh? I will do this in a dignified manner. Preparation H shrinks hemorrhoids. <laughs> now, from here to here may be an improvement, all right? <laughs> Well, you're still not walking around, pal. <laughs> you know, I mean... <laughs> I 
I mean, you may be able to roll over. <laughs> You're not gonna win any dance contests tonight, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> this is a terrific room to work. This is probably the best room in Las Vegas, you know. See, when you first get started in this business, you work so many strange places. Uh, one of the first places I ever worked was in Denver. I did the Denver Playboy Club. Now, I don't mean this to be sexist, really, but many of the Playboy bunnies have IQs slightly below those of actual bunnies, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the band knows from experience, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, you go in the ladies' room, they're little pellets on the floor, you know? This is really <laughs> These people are coming. <laughs> uh. My mom always told me, you can tell how classy a place is by the washroom. You ever see the washrooms they have here with fountains and people diving and attendants swimming and all this kind of thing? See, I'm always amazed that people that design public washrooms because I don't think these people have bathrooms in their own home, you know? <laughs> you ever go to a public washroom, the sink is down here and the paper towel is about four and a half feet higher than the sink. So when you wash your hands, you go for a towel, the water runs down your arm. You know? <laughs> see, here they have towels, which is a nice touch. So many places now try to be hip. Instead of having towels, have those stupid hand blowers. They got to stand there, People put hand blowers in washrooms never assume that you might want to wash your face. Yeah? <laughs> you got to stand there for 20 minutes with hot air. My eyes! <laughs> My face dry yet? <laughs> face is burned beyond recognition, you know. <laughs> Let's pick up the girls, Larry. <laughs> My retina melted. And I have never seen anybody go the distance with a hand blower. Huh? I used to see guys coming out of the washrooms in $500 suits going, that son of a... <laughs> you ever been to a washroom at a gas station? That's the lowest. Make you feel like a crook. Excuse me, can I have the key to the washroom? Yeah, here it is. It's on this big ring and don't try to steal it. <laughs> hey, listen, you've been very, very nice. Enjoy your day. See you all later. You know what you didn't do? I was watching, and we were all laughing backstage. He is one funny fella. I'm but so you didn't go on. Here. Well, these little, are the new microphones. A little emasculated mic. Yeah. Right. I feel like a man's mic should have a cord. You know, I'm walking on the... Well, all right, but go ahead. I'm sorry. With any luck, we will cut your cord while you're standing here. <laughs> anyway, Jay, but you didn't do the Playboy Bunny. I can't do that on television. You keep asking me to do that. Oh, I guess you can't. No. But in the Playboy Clubs, that always was my favorite part of the show in the showroom when the little bunny would come out and introduce the acts. They always screw up the names. Yeah. You know. My next act is um, um, Mr. J. You know, I said, now, honey, this is true. I said, it's not Mr. J. I said, it's Jay Leno. Leno is okay, if you forget, but it, it's Leno. Jay Leno, right? <laughs> I say, yeah, that's fine. And they come out with the thing. Our next act is, uh, ow. <laughs> it's too tight. You know, and, uh, ow. I, say, I, I love it. You having a good time in Vegas? I'm having time? a good time. I'm having a good time. Yeah. I, you know, I went to see one of the Elvis impressions. Oh, the impersonator, yeah. This is getting incredible. You know, I, down the strip here, they had... Popular. Uh, they had uh, Alan, a tribute to Elvis. Yeah. But... It's getting so bad across the street, they have Carl, a tribute to Alan. Have you seen him? Right. Very, very good. <laughs> Family here with you? Did your mom and dad No, come? they didn't come this time. They didn't I've come told your time. story, you know. Which one? Several times. About your girl. And when you oh, take her home, done. yeah, and, you, and your mother doesn't know how to introduce her to your friends. Huh? That's true. This is, you know, I, uh, my girlfriend, my mother's a little embarrassed that we were living together at the time. She didn't oh. know how to introduce us to neighbors. She Pardon. said, uh, well, this is my son, Jay, and his, uh... <coughs> oh, no, There's a lot of moms that know exactly what I'm talking about here. Does your girl mind that, that she's known no. as... <coughs> no, no, soon she will be Mrs. <coughs> <coughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. So that'll be all right. Did they come to see Perico? They must have come to see you with Perico. I gotta tell you a story. My mother, no, my mother will get mad at me for telling this story. This, <laughs> this is a true story, just to show you. We were working, you know Garden State Arts Center in New oh, Jersey? Fabulous. It's a beautiful theater in New fabulous. Jersey. And my, I got my mama's seat right in the front, all right? So at the concession stand, they sell boxes of chocolate chip cookies. Okay? So my mom goes up and she buys a box of chocolate chip cookies and she comes and puts her stuff in her seat and she comes backstage to talk to me. So we talked a little bit and I said, well, mom, the show's gonna start. You know, you better get out there. She goes, oh, okay. 
she goes back to her seat, and the guy sitting next to her is eating the chocolate chip cookie. You know? <laughs> so my mother is not the type to say anything. You know, she sits there, and she's getting madder and madder. And I'm on stage, you know, and I'm kind of watching this. And she's so finally she just reaches in the guy's box and eats one of the cookies. You know, and the guy looks at her, you know, and, and he eats a cookie. And then my mother, <coughs> she eats one, and then he eats one. This goes back and forth, and I'm watching this from the stage. And there's one cookie left. And the guy breaks it in half, and he kind of offers it to my mom. You know. <laughs> so my mother is getting angrier, and she goes, <laughs> and she eats that cookie. You know, so the show ends. I said, ladies and gentlemen, I made fun of her. There's my mom. Yeah. So they give her a nice round of applause, and my mother thinks, well, the man will apologize now. And the guy still doesn't apologize, and my mother just goes, <clears throat> gives him this mean look, and comes backstage. And I said, what's going on? And she's telling me a story about the rude man, and she's telling me the story. She opens her purse, and there's her box of cookies. Oh! <laughs> 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 oh, she'd been eating this guy's cookies for about an hour and a half. Oh, see, so whenever I come on your show, I always call my mother and say, that guy's watching, and he seems oh. like such a nice fella, but his mother is, is the rudest woman. That ever. is as bad a story as a friend of mine who was going down the subway in New York to work one day about 8.30 in the rush hour, and he reached to get a dollar out of his wallet and realized that the wallet was gone, and he had felt this guy bump into him, and he saw the guy rushing to the turnstile. So he jumped over the turnstile. The subway doors were open. The guy jumped on. The subway doors closed. He was outside. He reached in and grabbed the guy by the sleeve, pulled hard as the subway was leaving, and pulled the guy's sleeve right off. And there he is standing with a sleeve and no wallet. And he's furious. He gets the office and calls his wife. He says, you can't believe what happened to me on the subway. She said, how did you get on? You left your wallet at home. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the guy's sleeve. He ought to meet your mother with her cookies. <laughs> but in New York, the guy's like, eh. eh. They forget about it in our Jay, it is great to share a Good stage with you. you. You're the best. Thank you very much. Jay Leno, Thank ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back. Thank <laughs> you.